Oh God, what had someone done to this poor radio? <laughs> this is a Lafayette Telset SSB140, extremely popular AM Sideman 40 channel CB radio. Um, these were known for uh, popular with the sideband guys because they're really good sideband radios because they're cybernets. Good crystal filters, just overall very good design, just like most of the you know, most of the other cybernet radios. Um, this is the one I've rebuilt the VCO can, so you can lay over here. You can see it's all been the one that's the one I had apart and soldered shut. So I thought there hadn't been much done to this radio. Well, I was wrong. <laughs> the PLL circuit in this had never been touched and still hasn't. It's it's completely, I guess you could say, virgin. Has never had a channel mod done to it. Um, but this ver there it up. Got Varoc, <clears throat> Varactor diodes on the mind. This Zener diode here had been changed. Or not changed. It had some stuff done to it. Someone had put two of them in series. Looks like that one was probably the original one. And then stuck another one in series with it down there. I don't know what the hell they were doing. I, I've come to one conclusion over the years. Don't even try to figure out why people did something. If you're restoring a radio, you see something that's not right, just remove it. I, God, I, I've spent so much time, you know, trying to figure out why somebody did something, and I'm just going to remove it. It's a waste of time. Just, I've come to the conclusion, I'm never going to figure out what the hell went through some of these people's minds when they do some of this shit. But, so in any case, replace that. That was one of the first things I noticed. I've already changed just a couple of the capacitors, because it's getting a full recap job, so, you know, I was... Already right there, you know, change that one, the mustard drops, the original tantalums. But, and then I got back here. Now it's, radio's working now. The only thing I need to do is the recap job and clean it up and it'll be done. It's working perfect now. Um, in the Cybernet radios in a lot of these, now this runs a PTBM, see it back here, 058COX. Very similar to the PTBM 048 AOX boards. Um, a lot of these, you'll even see, they even have like a dotted line there. And you'll see a lot of these, a lot of radios that use cybernets. This is the synthesizer circuit, this entire area. It's got a metal shield plate runs from front to back here. You can see that, okay. In some radios, this this is actually a separate circuit board in some radios. The board numbers are different, but basically the same circuitry. They just divorced it. It's It's actually separated, so... Don't be surprised if you crack into a CB radio sometime, find cybernet boards, and it has basically this, just not attached. And you'll have wires that jump in between the two boards. But uh, in any case, someone had done some major surgery in the synthesizer circuit back here. The first thing that seemed just kind of stuck out like a sore thumb was after I got this fixed and I had my proper VCO voltage. VCO voltage is... is check from at this point right here you should have uh god what the hell are they on these three point i think it's 3.6 at uh on channel one and uh right around that's what you adjusted for 3.6 volts on channel one and then you'll usually end up with around two volts on channel 40 so in any case one of the first things i noticed was this ceramic trimmer cap was missing it just an empty hole and then i got to looking a little bit harder and i was like wait a minute this crystal something just doesn't look right that's got Gray plastic wrap around it, and it doesn't have. You can see, actually, this one over here. See how it's on a little plastic stand, holds it up off the board. Well, it wasn't like that. It looked like a unidin crystal, where the unidins, a lot of them, you'll see they have that gray plastic wrap around it with the, the uh, crystal frequency printed on it. Well, this one, that's what was in here. What didn't have the metal can where it's stamped. And the more I got to looking, there was a silver mica cap here. This capacitor was missing. This capacitor had a lead, the lead cut off of it. There were wires. Now, some of this stuff back here, these two diodes were both cut and some wires were tacked in. Some of that clarifier circuit uh, modification, I'm sure. But, and the more I got to look, this ceramic cap was missing. This ceramic cap was missing. Uh, God, I can't remember which other ones. I think this one might have been missed. There were all kinds of parts missing in here. And then other other parts tacked on the underside of the board there was a resistor missing um this transistor which i think uh, you know i have to look, pull up the schematic i think that's the the reference oscillator 
Well, let's see here. Where's that guy? Yeah, it should be the reference oscillator. That's the oscillator transistor for this crystal. It was the wrong transistor. Um, what the heck else was there? Oh, yeah, somebody had some other parts tacked in here, I guess, trying to expand range. They had a couple, and I'll show you all the parts. These are the parts that, oh, well, not my test probe tip, shield. So there's, yeah, a couple of the caps have already changed. But, yeah, this is the crystal that was in it. It's supposed to have a 10 point, uh, what the heck is it, 0525, I think it is. Yeah, 10.0525. So they had a 10.435 megahertz crystal installed in there. You see what I'm talking about? The plastic sleeve over it. You know, like what the hell? And you can see this one was meant for a socket, not for PCB mount or circuit board mounting. It's not wire lead. That was meant to fit into a socket. I'm like, what in the hell is going on here? And like I say, the more I looked, the more stuff I saw was missing, stuff that was wrong. I just, it, okay, that's it. It's time to just basically start from here and work my way back to the back on basically this to anything on the right of this shield and just literally check every single component and see if it's what's supposed to be in there. So this is all the stuff that was removed. There's the diodes. There was a ceramic that was tacked on the bottom. A couple of diodes that had the leads clipped. Here's that capacitor someone had cut the lead off of. This is the silver mica somebody had in place where there's supposed to be a... a ceramic which that's not a problem the silver micros are better but it was the wrong value here was the wrong transistor somebody had a 2sc620 in place where there should be a 2 2sc720 um this was the two looks like they're two inductors i'm assuming because it's i can see green on each end it doesn't feel like there's anything else inside that tube so they had two inductors um which are basically just coils they're in a you know they look like resistors, but if it's a green body, they're uh, coils, actually. But they had this tacked-in circuit, you know, bodged over to the tip of a diode that, was cut, of course, was cut. And, like I said, all those missing parts. And I finally, I was like, okay, that's it. It's just time to basically start from scratch, check every single component from here to the back of the board, and start replacing parts and installing missing parts and that's what i've done so i basically that's just what i did i started from here went back to there and added all of those missing so i don't know what some i'd have to sit down and you know do the math figure out what frequency they were trying to to get to with this like i said they had a 10 10 4 3 5 in place of a 10 uh point oh five two five and actually if we look at the schematic some of the capacitors they had, I get some of this other stuff out of the way here. Light up out of the way. Some of the capacitors they had. So yeah, Q4. Yeah, this is the. Uh, where was it? I mean, one of these transistors. Okay, 710. I said 720. I think it was a seven. I think it was this one. That's yeah. So that was the one they had a different transistor in. But this ceramic capacitor was missing. This ceramic trimmer capacitor was missing. This ceramic capacitor was missing. This crystal had been changed to the 10.4 or whatever the hell that thing is. Yeah, 10.435. A um, bunch of other resistors changed in this circuit. Um, I, like I say, I, I got to the point where it's just like, you've got to be shitting me. What the heck? <laughs> so... Yeah. What gets me is, by removing a lot of the, I guess with the the crystal they had stuck in there, they had to remove those to get onto whatever frequency they they wanted, because they just had too much capacitance in circuit. So, you know, <laughs> I don't know, but all of that. So right now, now the customer does want the clarifier unlocked on this, but uh, I went ahead and relock the clarifier because not no you once you get to this point that's another thing i got to do you see the clarifier knobs kind of sticking out farther than the rest actually it's because and it it doesn't feel right and if you pull on it well, look at that the damn shaft pulled out well it's not even the right control <laughs> i'll flip it over and show you it's they stuck a control in there it's about two times bigger in diameter than it's supposed to be but so I literally replaced all the missing parts and, you know, and swapped, you know, put back in the proper parts where they had changed values and whatnot. Basically put the clarifier circuit back to the way it would have been when it left the factory and 
guess what? The radio now works. It was horribly out of alignment on the transmitter circuit, which is, I understand that, because if somebody did have this working on a different frequency, that's going to throw off the, the transmit alignment. So, like, I just did a kind of a, you know, winged it. This hasn't been aligned. I'm not going to do a full alignment on it, of course, till I get the caps changed. But I went through just to make sure it was working okay, you know, adjusted all of the tra transmit transformers. And so it is hooked up to the power meter. You see there's dead key. Audio. Audio. Swinging 20 watts. I haven't even turned the scope on, so I'm sure that's distorted, no doubt in my mind. Sideband. Yeah, it does have a little bit of... Yeah, you can see it's got a little bit of power showing there, so it's got some audio. Audio. So doing about 14 to 15 watts on sideband. Got a little bit of carrier that still needs to be suppressed. But like I say, I'll get to that when I go to do the alignment. Main thing is, it actually works now. Yeah, it... <laughs> so, you know, basically, you ever get a radio like this? You know... Oh, and then to make matters worse, as, as if it wasn't hard enough trying to figure out what the hell was going on here, after I got all this stuff done, I plug in, not this microphone, another, I've got, God, I've got, I don't know, six or seven bench microphones. I just use adapters. They're all you know, standard wiring. I just use, have adapters made up for pretty much every radio on the planet, or I've got a little distribution box I can use. But you know, I plugged into my normal mic, which, grab it here. My standard A-Static D104M6B, good mics, and it's been a long time since I had to put a plug on the end of this thing, and guess what? I got all this, you know, like I say, I'm troubleshooting this, I got all this stuff done, I hook up the microphone, I key the mic, and it's not switching anymore. It's not switching from receive to transmit. Oh my god! So, you know, what the hell? I got that. I knock a wire loose off of the switching circuit. So, you know, in here checking the voltage, because that's actually up here. A lot of your DC switching transistors. There's one there. Uh, yeah, one down here. It's like 42 and 43. There's part of your switching circuit. But I don't think the voltage is going to them are okay. It's just so, yeah. Why not check the most obvious thing? Yeah, that's the mic. So I guess over the, you know, because like this thing gets plugged in, unplugged, plugged in, plugged, unplugged, you know, all the time. So yeah, it's, and I I always try to do really, really good, uh, you know, I pride myself in my mic, mic wiring jobs when I solder these things on there. They're as good, if not better, than the factory. Make sure clamps really tight. That's why you always say I always stick several layers of heat shrink tubing on those. So it's really cr cranked down on there. So the wires don't pull off because this gets you know plugged in and unplugged so much. But yeah, that's all it was. The blasted mic. The blasted mic wasn't switching. So yeah, just grabbed another another one, plugged it in, working fine. The power was low, but like I say, I brought that that back. But uh, yeah, so you, know, you run into shit like this. But for first things, if you're if you're not switching, yeah, and I should have known. You do this do this for a living. Should have known if you're. You're not switching from receive to transmit. The first thing and easiest thing to check because you don't need any test equipment is make sure your microphone's working. <laughs> so, you know, it happens to all of us. <laughs> so, but like I was, you start seeing shit like that a lot of times. Instead of trying, instead of trying to, you know, you know, replace, oh, there's something missing, put it in, see if it works. Just do like I did. Just start from the front to the back because like I said, I just went through the schematic and basically checked every single component to make sure it's right. It, it seems time-consuming, but it's actually faster in the long run. So, you know, and then here is this monstrosity of a clarifier control somebody has tacked in there. You can see this is the size they're supposed to be. It's just, it's the same, it should be the same size can as all the other ones. So, yeah, somebody's got this monster tacked in there, and like I say, they... For some reason, they've got the shaft ripped off, so I'll get a proper potentiometer stuck in there with with, with the you know a new get a new one stuck in there. We'll get that fixed up the way it's supposed to be, but yeah. So there's everything back in. Of course, I have. To, I'm not going to clean bother cleaning the circuit board completely. I've already cleaned it once. Had to do a little bit more work. Um, yeah, once I get all of the capacitors changed in it, I'll go ahead and completely clean off the circuit board. But yeah, you can see there, see the PLL circuit? This is the PLL chip right here. 
absolutely nothing's ever been done to it. That's you know usually this is the first area to get screwed with is the PLL circuit. People adding extra channels. Well, it never had extra channels. Well, it had extra channels all right. They were just completely on a different band. But uh, yep. So all that's been fixed up now so the radio actually receives and transmits it's just a matter of going through like i say change the clarifier control and then uh change the caps and do an alignment and this will be a basically good as well better than new radio um and ready for another 30 some years of use